Hello, welcome to LTE University. My name is Chris Reese. I am one of the instructors at Award Solutions, and we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about the LTE EPS architecture. So let's go ahead and get started. The EPS architecture can be broken down into two key parts. We have the EUTRAN or the evolved UMTS terrestrial radio access network and we have the EPC or the evolved packet core. If we were to, to make a comparison between this network and say a UMTS network or a 1x EVDO network we could say well this is really nothing more than my radio access network and this is nothing more than my packet switched core network. But one of the things you'll notice is I don't have anything equivalent to a circuit switched core network. Well, we don't have that in LTE. What we're going to do is we're going to use a third network, more than likely an IP multimedia subsystem, to deal with our, our voice type services. We're not going to talk about that today, but we will address that at a future time. But to really understand this, what we need to do is we need to, to look underneath the clouds. We need to, to um, you know, blow the clouds out of the way and look at the nodes that are in there. And so the nodes of our, our EPS, we'll first start with our, our EUTRAN. And that's really only made up of one node, which is something called an enhanced node B. And all of our enhanced node Bs are just directly connected to each other. So we're not going to have anything equivalent to a RNC like we'd have in, in 1XEVDO um, or UMTS or a BSC, a base station controller like we would have in, in GSM. We have this, this community of peers that work together to manage the radio network. And so all that together will be that enhanced UMTS terrestrial radio access network or the EUTRAN. To look at the core network, what we, we need to look at is really primarily four key nodes. And, and there are many, many other no nodes we could talk about, but if we look at this from a, a minimalistic perspective, we've got four key nodes that we care about. And that's going to be the MME, the Mobility Management Entity, something called an S Gateway, or a Serving Gateway, abbreviated SGW, something called a Packet Data Network Gateway, a PDN Gateway, abbreviated typically as a P Gateway, and something called an HSS, a Home Subscriber Server. Now we're going to look at these as three basic parts. The first part that we're going to look at is the MME and the SGW. And if you put these two nodes together, you can think of them as being very similar to an SGSN or a PDSN from a 1XEVDO or a UMTS network. Um, and they're distributed. Um, and if you're familiar at all with, with like what has happened in the circuit switched world of having an MSC server and a media gateway, you can think of this, this MME is like an SGSN gateway. And you can think of the serving gateway as kind of being like a, a, a data server, a data gateway to go back to that same model that we have in circuit switch world. And these two nodes are really going to manage the subscriber, authorize, authenticate, set up bearer paths and such. The HSS is going to be an evolution of our HLR. So this is nothing more than a subscriber database. And it will have all of the subscriber features. It will have um, all of the authentication related information. And what is the, the subscriber allowed to do? The last thing we have is this PDN gateway or, or P gateway. And the thing that I want you to remember about this is this is an IP anchor. It will be equivalent to 
it'll be equivalent to a home agent or a GGSN in other technologies. Now if we take this architecture and we superimpose on this um, just the, the wires of how we're connecting everything up, it will look something like this. We're going to have a connection to the MME. We're going to have a connection to the S gateway. My S gateway will be connected to my P gateways. My MME and my S gateway will be connected as well as my MME and my S gateway will be connected. Now in a future one of these sessions we're going to talk about the fact that these are all IP networks and what is the IP protocols associated with these things. But for right now what I want you to see is I want you to see the fact that the the EU TRAN is directly connected to each of these different boxes for the sake of delivering traffic. So that is our enhanced packet system. That is the LTE architecture. For all of the different acronyms, please look at the LTE University webpage and we'll have a link to all of the different acronyms so we can decode these things for you, as well as we'll have a copy of this file. And I hope you enjoyed it and check back with LTE University with future sessions like this. Thank you very much.